Guys, welcome back to another episode. We have a very special guest. Welcome, only Jayus. What's here. going on? What's How your What's your actual? It's is a. Is, is you can call me Bella. Bella. Okay, yeah. Bella uh, Avila, right? Avila. 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 Yeah. Okay, we have a friend. Her name's also Bella, mm. but it's Bella Avila, not Avila. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so they're like there's the Spanish Avila and there's Portuguese Avila. Just pronunciation, but similar. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, where Where are you exactly from? You're from multiple places, right? Vegas, New York. Was born and raised in Vegas. Uh, dad lived in Vegas. Mom lived in New Jersey, New York area. So I moved back and forth. Okay. And then went to high school near Bakersfield. If you know the area, it yeah, sucks. Yeah. Uh, and then moved to LA about a year ago. About oh, yeah. a year ago. And that's from TikTok, right? Everything going on with that? Yeah. TikTok was blowing up and I didn't want to be in school anymore because school sucked. And yeah. Then, yeah. What, what were you doing in school? Math and computer science. So oh, I, I, shit. Technically, okay. I graduated. I got my AA in both those degrees, but I just didn't want to continue and get the bachelor's. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. a lot of guests that we interviewed, they drop out of high school, right? Because yeah. you I've know heard of a lot of drop yeah, out. Yeah. Everybody they didn't even go to middle school. They dropped out of middle Dude, school. We know people have dropped out of middle school, but they're making a million dollars. You need at least like an eighth grade education to get through anything. What do you want? You would <laughs> think. <laughs> you would think, like, right? T- TikTok just fucking blew them up. Interesting. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I can't imagine being 13 and like millions of followers. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to handle it. It's nuts. It's nuts. So wait, what was the arc of, so take us from like living in uh, Bakersfield, right? You moved there. And then what was it like when you started blowing up? What was like going through your head? Who are the people that you watched growing up? And then you made the move out here. So I watched a lot of like, if you know, Philip DeFranco, he's still oh, yeah. like just an icon that I watch every single day. A uh, lot of like story commentary channels growing up and like, I saw that and I was like, I could do that. I want to do YouTube. Yeah. Had a YouTube channel in high school, had like maybe 6,000 followers. It wasn't anything great. And then I got to college, needed to focus more on school and sports. So I did that. And then I heard about TikTok from my little sister and it became a competition of who can get more followers. So it was like, she would post, I would post. She had way more followers than me for months. Yeah. I finally passed her up with some Bill Gates video that I had a long ass time ago. <laughs> and then I got fired from Best Buy. I was working at Best Buy making videos in my uniform. They found out about oh, it. Yeah, Not yeah. even at work. Like before work, after work, just in my uniform. They found out about it. Told me to delete the videos or we're going to fire you. So I deleted the videos and then they fired me. They fired you anyway? <laughs> yeah, they fired me anyway. And then I re-uploaded the videos and then like two weeks later I hit a million followers. So it ended up kind of working out. Like getting fired was the best thing ever because I could just focus on making That's videos. Crazy. You know FouseyTube? I've heard the name. Yeah, so he yeah. did a ton of the boxing stuff. He started off working at Best Buy too, right before he he, uh, mm-hmm. he blew up. There's something about working in the blue shirt. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. now I see like Best Buy ads on TikTok. I'm like, really, guys? Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I was giving <laughs> free promo with milli, like million view videos. Yeah. You know? And now they're actually paying. But for how it. do you like describe your content? Like, is it more just like? It's like mostly educational, but I also try to throw in like vlog stuff, just mm-hmm. my life stuff, mm-hmm. my opinion stuff. What do you just teach? Uh, it started off with psychology. So like I got famous for like psychology tricks, uh, and then it kind of moved into like weird human body facts and then history facts and then kind of anything that I could just talk about and try to research and educate people on what my really researched on is my content. Speaking of both Philip DeFranco and educational, you're up for a streamy. Yeah. Oh, you saw that. (laughs) I know because we're up for one for news. Oh, sick. Yeah. Congratulations. It's huge. It's awesome, right? It's, we, we know like growing up, that's the big, that's like the Oscars of the internet. That's it's what I the keep Oscar. on saying. That's how I described it to people. I got nominated last year and lost to Mark Rober, but his videos were like oh, fuck. just out of this world. And I got nominated again. His squirrel and video, he's, he's that the guy with the squirrels? It does like he's the, the one that did the the glitter. Oh, like, the glitter bomb. Yeah, the yeah, glitter yeah. bomb thing. Yeah. And so his videos are awesome. But I got nominated again, and I'm the only TikToker amongst all YouTubers. And it's like, this isn't fair. Like, the quality difference is <laughs> it's yeah. not fair. Because we're like that, too. Because we're in there with Philip DeFranco for news. Sick. As well as Andrew Callahan from All Gas, No Breaks. We're the only TikTokers. So mm-hmm. they started to put some TikTokers in. I think we're like test subjects. Yeah. Bit. We're you know. fucked. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't look good. Like, this year, uh, <laughs> yeah, it look good Tom, Tom uh, what's his last name? I forget his last name. But Tom, he makes incredible YouTube videos. I'm assuming that he's going to win this year. And yeah. I'll hopefully get a third round next year. How does it work? Is it voting from your fans or it's is it judges? Judges from behind a screen get to vote if you win or not. Oh, so we can't oh, really? even promote it to our own fans. You can. It's not. It might not help. Oh, damn. Oh, I, really? That's fucked. Because we I have thought, crazy oh. viewers, so I thought we could do it with that. See, I thought that. Yeah. I thought that was what it was too. I was like, go vote for me. And it's like it's not a voting thing. I'm like. Fuck. 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 Yeah. So, so, so we're they, definitely losing. So how do they decide? Bullshit. Is it like based off history, like views? What is it? I they might have it on their website. I'm not sure the exact things, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna be like looking about how many views you got this year, what your actual content mm, was, and uh, like how well diverse you are. Because they're not really 
judging my YouTube channel from what I can understand. They're just going to be judging my TikTok, but they're yeah. going to be judging everybody else's YouTube channels. I think we're going to uh, figure out a way to bribe the judges and we'll let you <laughs> in on that too. But you I can get in contact with them. Let me know. Just yeah, yeah, of course. I want the trophy. Yeah, yeah. I just want the trophy. Quick PayPal. But did you go to <laughs> no, like... I just want to go fucking like, like give a little speech, like a fucked up speech. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Just like, moon them, yeah, or something. That'd be fun to see. Last year there was there wasn't an award show because of COVID. It was like all live streamed. Uh, this year I'm hoping there's an award show. There's That'd be cool. Be. I just see you guys from across the table. Like, like yo, oh, what's there? going on? <laughs> that okay, so there was it was all Zoom last year. Mm -hmm. I wish it's. I hope it's not like that this year. I Me want too. to attend something. You know, dress up. Actually, like go to an event for it and make mm -hmm. it feel like. Like, this is a big thing. Like, you, we got nominated for the streamies. Like, I that's know. huge. Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with my friend who was like, it's insane. If you go there, you're going to see, like, the biggest creators, everyone that we've seen growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's like, it's weird how, uh, from the outside, you still view it as these are the biggest creators, but it still feels like that when, like, we go. Because we might be creating content, but there's always people that have been doing it for so much yeah. longer. That we look up to. I know. We're yeah. still, like, starstruck when we we're, go to these we're events. We're new. We're way too new to yeah. the internet. It, it feels, infants. doesn't feel real. How many categories are there? A lot. There's like, like 40. 40 categories, really? Yeah. Damn. Tons of stuff. They get specific too, like best costumes and like best. Wait, really? Yeah. Hell like Mark specific. Rober isn't even part of the education category this year. I think he's part of the technology category because oh, okay. it's something different. What the fuck? That's insane. Oh, yeah. There's like apparently Emma Chamberlain got nominated for like best editor or something. Oh, no yeah, way. Yeah. She edits her own videos. <sighs> yeah. There's no way. No way. <laughs> she has a team. Yeah. And there's like some controversy there or something. Oh, okay. It's more about like who has the best team that you hire. Well, yeah. like yeah. two years ago, yeah. Tana Mojo won Creator of the Year up against like Ninja and Mr. Beast and like what a bunch of other people and it's like okay who's picking these people? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tana was sucking. Simps. Tana was sucking dick in the back. Oh my god! <laughs> get a fucking award. I mean, I'm probably. Like, yeah, I mean. she said that N word <laughs> and she gets the fucking award. Like, what the hell? Yeah. Ooh. Then Idubs yeah. is in there as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be lit. That'd be sick. Uh, okay, and so then we've seen you at um, I think a couple parties. We saw you in Miami, right? That's that was fun for the yeah. the social gloves boxing match mm -hmm. yeah yeah what do you do, what do you do when you go to those events because your content's mostly just like literally it's in front of a mirror i mean know? i just i post like some stories for them maybe an instagram thing but i went there to meet uh the people running the live x live like the oh, guy oh, yeah. from live x live i wanted to do like my own female boxing match which oh, i was training yeah. for for a really long time turns out nobody wants to fight me like there's people that want to <laughs> yeah, fight what? me they'll say online that they want to fight me and then as soon as i send them a deal they're like mm, no That'd but actually, also, it didn't. Crazy. It didn't. Be big, it actually. didn't help that Live That'd X Live didn't pay their boy boxers, so that kind of like lost yeah, legitimacy, yeah, yeah. and I wasn't able to find another producer. But like, I hit up Hannah Stocking. Hannah Stocking was like, "I'll fight you." Never, never hit me back up. Yeah. And then a bunch of people made videos saying like, "I'll fight JS." And then when I'm like, "Hey, you want to actually fight?" They're like, "No." <laughs> That's so. Like, but you're gonna keep the video up. <laughs> but some yeah. people were psyched to get the opportunity to fight you. Like they yeah. wanted the opportunity. But I wanted to get somebody that had at least similar clout to me, so we could sell some tickets. Because right. like I was. I wasn't going to keep the money from this. I wanted to try and just keep the boxing thing going and just, yeah. I don't know. It didn't work yeah, out. The boxing thing now is kind of like dying off a little bit. Yeah. I'm still interested in it. I live next to a boxing gym. I go sometimes and I train a little bit, but I yeah. just, I don't think it's the next thing for me. So who would you yeah. want to box? Just like anybody or just like, do you have anybody? I'm my friend, uh, Tati, Oluma Tati. I think it'd be so funny if I, we fought each other because like, she's like, this is going to be so much fun. And I'm like in there like, I'm you beat the shit out of her. <laughs> yeah. Boom. And it's kind of hard to fight your friend, though. Like, wouldn't you want to fight anybody like that you don't like? That's the thing is like... I think it would be easier to fight your friend. The, the, my my like friend is also right. six foot two. Like, I wanted to find somebody as tall as me. Because there was a lot of girls that are like, yeah, I'll fight you. But they're like five, six. And I'm like, we're not even in the same weight class. Yeah. And then there was Sedona. She's six foot seven. She's, what? Six foot seven? She wanted to fight me. And I was like, honestly, thinking about it, I was like, I'll die for money. Like, this is like, easy. <laughs> oh, for sure. But she's 200 pounds. I'm 160. She doesn't want to lose weight because of basketball. I can't really gain that much weight. So, so like, it, it just didn't work out. Who is this, though? Sedona. Who's that? Huge uh, Oregon State basketball player, oh. women's basketball player. Oh, I know uh, what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and I know Lumatati too. She's like the uh, photographer, photographer yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. she's great. Okay, really cool. So almost got them cool. to fight, and then it never ended up happening. So. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on to the next thing. Moving on. <laughs> well, LiveX Live is that's a fat lawsuit now, so you can't really go through them. Yeah. So. Sucks. Maybe like Triller. I actually uh, ne never got on Triller because as soon as I downloaded the app, somebody took my username already and I was like, not even worth it. I never started posting on there. Do you guys Fair. post on Triller? No, no, we don't no. at all. Yeah, me either. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anyone that really... I mean, I know some people that use Triller, but who's really on there all the time? The people that are sponsored by Triller. Yeah, like Charlie yeah. D'Amelio posts on there. Yeah, but Charlie D'Amelio, for example, will get like $100,000. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying like 60K views per per, t per video on Triller. It's so different than the yeah, amount of views yeah. you get it's on It's just TikTok. not as big. Yeah. It's anonymous users, too. Yeah. Have you had any uh, interesting um, stories about like meeting creators down here? 
anyone that you kind of shocked you or you're just like oh that did uh, not go as well as i thought taylor holder was a lot nicer than like i thought just as i see these people with like a lot, big giant following i'm like oh they probably got to their head he was super nice my little sister was freaking out because we met we saw him at saddle and she's like belly you're famous you have to go talk to him and i'm like yeah. i don't even know him that's gonna be weird if yeah. i'm just like i do tiktok too yeah no so he she went up to say hi and he was super nice to her took a picture like talked to her for a minute and then i met him at squid games and i told him that mm. he's like i don't remember but nice sick sick he was yeah. nicer than I thought. We've yeah. had some bad experiences. He's, he's with kind him. of a pussy sometimes. No <laughs> but you know, it's all good. <laughs> like, it's all good. Yeah. Like no cap, though. Wait, wait, explain yourself. What do you like, mean? He's been nice to me, you know. No. I mean, he's he's nice, but he's like a pussy in like certain events. He always has to be a ten- center of attention. It's just he weird. definitely tried to steal the key during the hay thing, though, from somebody that did find oh, it. Oh, he that cheated. Person, he cheated. That the cookie person game ended too. up. I cheated in the cookie game. Fuck. <laughs> that he ended up. Uh, the person he tackled ended up going to the ER for his foot. Like he's in a cast now. Oh shit! Okay, wait. Explain the Squid Game thing because that was a huge event that Berkeley went to. We saw videos of it. Somebody rented. Oh, Zach Clayton rented an entire warehouse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Got everybody like official like Squid Jump Game jumpsuits. Jump yeah. There was people, uh, the pink guys in their masks and stuff had paintball guns. They would shoot you if you would die, and if you got yeah. shot, you died. It was it was super fun. Like way more put together. I'm really excited to like see the actual yeah. full production of it. It's supposed yeah. to be like a 30 minute like movie he's gonna he t- i was talking to him about it. i was like i'm excited to see the video he's like the movie yeah I'm like, yeah the movie yeah <laughs> sorry he's, yeah yeah it was cool as fuck. yeah they had everything set up for it. they had the haste they, so they put a key in a massive haystack people to find that was the final that was the final thing there was two silver keys one gold key so if you found the silver key you were fucked mm-hmm. but if you found the gold key you won but there was just way too much hay yeah like way too much they it spent like 40 minutes trying to find this key and nobody like there was one moment where they were like picking up the hay and shaking it to try and see if they could hear the key drop. Mm-hmm. You heard the little ding and then all of a sudden everybody tackled this one person. <laughs> They're fighting over it. Somebody grabs it. They run to the table. They're still fighting over it. They finally open up their hand and it's like a screw from the warehouse. Oh, oh, yeah, it wasn't nothing. even a key. Like, <laughs> And this key, he broke his ankle? I don't know if he broke it but he's in a cast. He has like some sort of brace. He's yeah. on crutches now because of <laughs> somebody tackling him i'm assuming it was taylor yeah. tackling him during but the he whole won thing, though to get didn't it. he win too no, no. number oh. 36 won oh okay. i don't know yeah, yeah i know he lives at uh an apartment complex that i all the friends live at but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah i don't the know his Ava, name. right that's what you're yeah. talking about that there's one complex guys that like literally every influencer lives in unless they live in like in a house sponsored Where? by something Why? it's called the ava the in ava. hollywood it's like everybody lives there i almost oh. moved there too and like is ho- it like downtown hollywood but like it's studio like, city it's I don't even know where it is. I don't live in Hollywood, but it's just like in Hollywood, which That's is too cool. much LA mm. for me. <laughs> That's Damn. Cool. Okay. Um, okay. I want to ask you about another thing as well. Mm-hmm. You have a really interesting trajectory in your career because you've gone through some shit. I like have. just to put it bluntly, you've I've gone started some, some shit. Too. <laughs> you've started some shit too. You're right. Yeah. But like you've also like gotten through it, handled it in a way that I think is better than most people have ever handled like tough situations, especially things that just get blasted on the internet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You went through it. You, you did a series of apologies that I thought was really sincere, but that in the entire story about like how you got like low key canceled, right? There was a petition on change.org that had like 400,000 signatures to get you booted off TikTok. To, yeah. Right. But then you <laughs> wait 400. To be fair though, I promoted it. People. I promoted it. Uh, okay, like, you promoted it though? On one of my spam accounts, I, it had like 30,000 signatures and I was like, oh no, 30,000 versus my, I think like 13 million at the time. I was like, TikTok's totally going to listen to this. Yeah. And then everybody started signing it and I thought it was funny. Like, I understood the complaints Mm -hmm. that were coming from it, but the idea that TikTok was going to listen to a petition to actually take me down over it, it just, it was weird. Yeah. It's, it was made by somebody, it was made by somebody that's been making videos about me for almost like a year and a half now though. Really? Like they just don't like you? I, I, they have their reasons, but petition, (laughs) petitions. Okay. How are you feeling through all this? Feeling through the petition or this? Well, Well, the petition. The, the petition, petition was weird. I just, I mostly just tried to ignore it. I've gotten to the point where I try not to read all the comments anymore because yeah. there was a point where I was reading every little thing. And after the petition thing, I was like, that's it. I have to stop acknowledging this if I didn't do anything, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because when we interview creators and they go through situations like this, I, we love to ask them what the thought process was because people who are who are involved in pushing the cancel cancellation of people don't fully understand how like how it affects and what the actual creator is going through. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting hearing about how 
like what the mentality is. How do you actually address something? And I think you did it better than a lot of other people have ever done it. Do you? I do. That's good. Because yeah. I don't. I, I look back every day and I'm like, I could have done this better. I should have handled this with thing better. I shouldn't have responded to this. I should have responded to this no, instead. Like yeah. I'm constantly overthinking like what I did, but it's like, yeah, it's in the past. I can't do anything except just try to move forward and be better yeah. than what I did before. Mm -hmm. So we see it from like, cause we break down the news on TikTok. So yeah. we report, we report on everything that was going on with you. That I remember like, seeing yeah. your guys' videos. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you came up to me in Miami. You were yeah. like, JS, what's up? And <laughs> I was like, I'm looking at him like, I know this guy from somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. like after the party, I looked it up and I was like, he talks shit about me. <laughs> oh yeah. No, yeah. that's all we do. That's, that's <laughs> but it was funny. Yeah. It was funny the meeting you again and pointing it out and you were like, ah, yeah, like, ah shit. Cause we do it all the time. Cause we talk shit about all these different creators. We expose things that they've done. Eh? But when you meet them, that's when you have to break that ice loop and be like, yeah, we did that. But we also don't give a fuck. Yeah. We, we do whatever we want every day. I don't Let's give a chill. fuck either. Cause I have to think about it. It's like, you weren't the only ones. I yeah, was so. like, the front page of TikTok Bro, for most of yeah, February yeah, because yeah. of it. To so, so explain that situation to the audience, I'm sure like a lot of you guys recognize if you watch our content, it was uh, you're you're really well known for creating very like um, like educational, but you're also uh, very open about your sexuality, like yeah. how how you. I think with you that. were the one that said it best. Like I never actually put my thought into words, but when you said it, it was like, yeah, I was the person that tried to be open about everything and anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm accepting of all people, and then when that came out, it was just like a complete. Spiral. Like, yeah. That, I think that's why it got so big. It was like completely opposite. Of the, what? Who yeah. I was when I was a, a teenager, I was just so toxic. Yeah. And I grew up and tried to move away from that, but mm. the internet follows you forever kind of thing. Oh, and it, did those like, were those like back in the day? Like the I messages? was like 16. Oh, damn. Wow. I'm 22 like, now. Oh, damn. Six I didn't know years that. ago. Okay. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people knew. I didn't know that. I oh, thought it was like, like, mm. like last month or something. No. I did not know that. I. When I made my apology video, I was going to mention that I did say those things six years ago, but yeah. the people that I was like asking for advice on help, like what to actually say, they were like, it doesn't yeah. matter how long ago it was. I was like, you're right. But I feel like I should have mentioned it because still a lot of people think that I said it like yeah the internet hates happened. the yeah. excuse of like i did i, did, I grew up yeah. not knowing what this word yeah. because like in in the dms that came out you wrote the hard art of somebody yeah. you said uh so someone should get shot someone should get shot like hurtful yeah. things like that different uh, the and i think people hate the excuse on the internet of i grew up in this different environment i didn't know what that word yeah. meant um, and I, I said the opposite of right it's like i knew what that word meant and i yeah. chose to use it anyway and still to this day i have to try and figure out why that was in my vocabulary mm -hmm. and I can't make excuses for it. I have a cert, like some ideas about why I was using that, why I thought it was okay. But like end of the day, it wasn't okay. No, yeah. you it was toxic as shit. And I don't know who that person was. I'm not that person anymore. Yeah. The, the words that you use in the apology that like really connected me was when you're being honest. With it. I said the meanest thing I could possibly think of ever saying yeah. that was no another one thing that. I should have in hindsight, looking back on it, meanest wasn't the word that I was looking for because it just wasn't the word I was looking for. More toxic. It was the most toxic thing I can think of to yeah. try and say. But mean just wasn't the right word. That was another thing that people like got me on mm. with the apology video. But Okay. That's, what, what was the thing like when you first saw that these screenshots were starting to go around? Like that, Wait, who, who, who was it, it to? Yeah, who, who was it like? Wait, who sent it It was out? a like, random person that I went to school with. We were having an argument. I went back and did like a, it's called an IG data backup where I could read all of our texts. Uh, we were arguing about politics and he mentioned that I deserve to be in foster care and like it was just like we were saying toxic shit, toxic shit, toxic shit, toxic yeah. shit. He said just as toxic things as I did, yeah. but he deleted his messages. Yeah, I could tell he deleted and all the messages. You got famous and then he didn't. So He's he actually is. on TikTok. He oh, just yeah. he never released it himself. He sent it to different creators that don't like me with bigger platforms too. What a fucking what yeah. That's really But like he was also fourteen at the time. So like yeah. I can't hold him against what he said. Yeah. Like but he held it against me. It was weird. It's yeah, just a whole. You guys situation. are both dickheads back then. <laughs> <laughs> we <were> just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just fucking assholes for no reason yeah. to each other. And then it came out Ooh. and. I've talked about my insomnia, insomnia a lot. When it came out, at that point, I already hadn't slept for two days. Yeah. So the first thing I did was message my old management company, and I messaged my manager, and I was like, what do I do? And he's like, ignore it. And I was mm. like, okay. And so I did. And then I was like, hey, like I should apologize for this. Like I feel gross. Yeah. And he's like, no, we're just going to wait until it gets bigger. And I'm like, it's bigger right now. Oh, Let's they, apologize they, now. And they like, wanted it to get bigger? They wanted, they wanted to wait and see if it would get bigger before I right. said anything mm. about it. Oh, damn. And in hindsight, I should have just recorded an apology and uploaded it right then yeah. and there. But I 
didn't know what to do. I didn't trust my own instincts. I didn't know who to listen to. So I was just listening to the people in charge of my career. And that's what they did. They tried to save the career and just made it worse. Right. Because their incentive is to make sure that you can still be making money and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's it's hard because you think like, okay, maybe I should have put an apology out right away. So when people on the internet would just be like, wow, she's really just like blowing it off and trying to take take care of I don't it. even There's know if that would have been so better criticisms. but I feel like that should have what that's what I should have done instead is like actually apologize for the, what I said yeah. rather than running and trying to figure out like what my management wanted mm. me to do because my management said like once it got to a point where it's like we have to apologize even though I already wanted to apologize mm. they made me write an apology I recorded it they didn't like it I had to rewrite it I had to re-record it they didn't okay. want me t- they wanted me to set it up on like a tripod like how I did it, but I wanted it to be like more in the mirror, like how I normally address people. The whole thing was just weird. It was so so bad. It's so funny because like on our our channel, we always make fun of like influencers and creators about like setting up their apology videos. Now it's it's actually a thing. It was too produced. Yeah. Right. That's like the David Dobrik went through the same thing. Logan Paul's famous one. You're right. It's like Mm -hmm. I made a... And I'm just like up there on that list now of like (laughs) shitty influencer apologies when like that's not what I wanted to do at all. <laughs> Everything I said in the apology though, like I truly meant, but I just know that the, if I would have went about it a different way, if I would have posted it earlier, if I would have I mean you're not even not listened to not my even, management. It would have I feel like it would have gone over well, but yeah. again, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't even call ourselves uh, anybody influencer if you don't have an apology video out there. So, you know. <laughs> Did we I hate the word influencer. We're, 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 <laughs> I hate it so much. We're waiting we're waiting for ours. Yeah, we're waiting for ours when so we have to apologize. Soon. Um yeah. wait, so that's great. So your management would go, would go back and forth with you to make sure you're saying the right thing thing because mm-hmm. that's what a lot of people don't know about what what was logan paul thinking when he apologized yeah. or like david dobrik but it is that you have it is you're that. talking that with man. pr yeah. you're talking yeah. with talking management. with all those people and like i just want to make it clear that i wrote my apology a lot mm-hmm. of people have said that like oh she hired a ghost writer she didn't write herself i wrote my apology but the way that i it was given to the internet that was more management mm-hmm. it, was, it should have been it wasn't how i wanted it to be yeah, yeah i get but, what you mean Man, it's man. A, that, that this was in February. I've just been trying to move on and show that I'm not that same person. I feel yeah, like my content the past two years have shown that I'm not yeah, that 100%. toxic ass person that it used to be. Yeah. And I'm just trying to continue that, I guess. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I want to ask you one more thing because I think one thing that people overlook is when they say, oh, this person, unless they're being booted off and canceled, they're not really being punished. Mm-hmm. The real punishment from behind the scenes is like the relationships with management, brands. Like how did it affect oh, your not business? Even, not even that. I mean, with management and brands, they... The management that tried to help me get through this dropped me as soon as I didn't get a brand deal for like three weeks. I don't work with them anymore. Anybody that comes up to me and says, hey, do you recommend this one? I tell them no. Yeah, yeah. I explain the whole situation. Don't work with them. I'm with a new one now. But it wasn't even like, wow. like I didn't really care. I cared, but I didn't really care that the internet knew. It was more when family members started texting me about it. It was oh, more no, when friends wow. from high school started texting me about it. And it's like, holy shit. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like this, that was... They, it was just like different. this big skeleton coming out of the closet yeah. that I just had to face. Yeah. Were they were they coming out with you the positivity like, hey, are you, I'm here for you, or was were there some people actually mad at you that were? It was that were half close and half. Damn, it was about half and half. I've lost a lot of people through that, but I also learned who real friends were, and I learned who, what fake friends yeah. did, and like, I don't know. I just, I, I it was a big learning experience that I feel like I could. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck, Ryan? I feel like I could have learned it without it being exposed to the internet, but. With it being exposed to the internet, it was just yeah faster, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. That's crazy. I don't know if any of that makes sense. No, it totally makes sense. Yeah. Because people don't think about like how it actually affects people's personal lives. And like mm-hmm. when people just want you to get canceled because that's a punishment to people, mm-hmm. it's like, no, it's about the relationships you have with people close to you. I don't like to Money. say that I got canceled because obviously I'm still here. Yeah. I didn't get canceled. I got backlash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of backlash for a shitty thing that I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, wh- but wh- not wh- canceled. Like- like were the, what were like examples that fake friends showed themselves when you're in that situation? Uh, I had friends just completely like initially it was like people unfollowing me without talking to me first. Then mm. it was people not hanging out with me without talking to me about yeah. it or people talking shit about me to people that don't know me, even though they haven't talked to me about it. It was mostly people going out of their way to make the situation bigger and about them rather than just talking to me if yeah. that makes sense mm. yeah i wouldn't consider it fake though because like if like if you look at the dms it's pretty fucking blatant that was no, like okay i could i could just dip on her and not like say anything you know? yeah True. no I, I understand it but it was also like it we got to the point where i didn't have anybody and i was just talking to anybody that would talk to me because i didn't have anybody at that point and a lot of the people that were reaching out to me mm-hmm. were just using me for content there was somebody that called me 
when I made my apology video at that point, I hadn't slept for five days. I was on my way oh my to the God. hospital because I was hallucinating. And this person <laughs> texted me that I'd kind of followed for a little bit. They're like, hey, I just want to let you know I'm here. Anything you need, like, if you just want to talk to somebody, I'm here. And I was right. like, you know what? I need to talk to somebody. So yeah. I called them. They recorded the entire conversation and just no. posted it to the internet. So that's that, that's yeah. kind of what I mean with like fake, but I also understand so how everybody and you have that no knew sleep. me reacted. Yeah, that's, just, yeah. that's fake yeah. as fuck. That that's, is them. And you had no sleep, like insomnia. Like I, I've never been through it, but I have to imagine you are not in a no. mental state to yeah. be able to like think properly. You haven't slept. But I still, the, the time ticks on. I had to do it anyway, but yeah. I wasn't in the mental state to do anything that I should have been doing. Like True. That's horrible. That's horrible. Wow. But okay. I've gotten my insomnia under the control now. I have Good. meds for it, and a dog actually helped me for some reason getting on a better schedule. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Your dog keeps you going? He gets me tired so I can sleep. What type, nice. what type of dog do you have? A Great Dane. Really? He fucking... Yeah, I, I was walking lit. him, and I sprained my ankle the other day. He uh, Dragged got, your ass? <laughs> no, really. He got scared by a Halloween decoration <laughs> and sprinted in the other direction. My ankle kissed the concrete, and now I have a brace That's that I have to wear yeah. for a few weeks. How big is it? I was like... Is he's it? about 120 pounds. Uh, oh my god! He's nine months old. Nine but months. it's an actual Great Dane. Mm -hmm. So it's supposed to be a hu yeah. huge. You can, dog. He's huge. Yeah. The face is. You so can follow his Instagram, Astro the GD. He's at almost 30,000 followers. Of course he is. <laughs> Astro the GD. Yeah, yeah. That's he's weird. he's the he's the prettiest dog you ever see, but he's a fucking asshole. Damn. Love okay. him though. Um. So you you also have your own uh, token. You have a uh, right. You have my no own crypto. cryptocurrency. Yeah. How, how is that? How does that work? Because I a lot of people were getting flack for a little bit about how like beast. It's <laughs> oh, pretty cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this Huge. beast. Very cute dog. Okay. So I, I do have yeah. my own cryptocurrency, and you asked how it works. Uh, it's through Rally, which is like another cryptocurrency that kind of like hosts my cryptocurrency, and people can. It's only like 50 cents for one coin. So people can pay, and the more they pay, the more like rewards they get. So like. A uh, certain number of coins uh, they can get on like my private Instagram story. Another certain right. coins I'll follow them back on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, we do movie nights on Discord, kind of thing. Like just different rewards depending on like how much JS coin you own. That, so that's cool. As fuck. In the beginning, there was a couple sites that was trying to do that, and the flag that they received was like, okay, they had like Logan Paul coin up there, mm -hmm. but Logan Paul didn't know that he was part of that. And so the problem with that is people invest in the coin thinking they're investing in the creator and the yeah. value will increase. But it's not even for it, him. It isn't for him. But yeah. you're, you're actually doing the opposite, which is you're providing value for owning the token yeah. is that you get to be part of your story. Is the economic side for your viewers as well and, and for yourself that like as more people accumulate the token, the, the price more of the token that it's rises? worth. Yes. It's not necessarily you want to invest in JS coin because it's going to be the next Bitcoin. You're going to make so much money right. from it. It's more of just an alternative way for people that want to sponsor me and help me out kind of like on Twitch yeah, yeah. to directly come to me rather than twitch taking like half the percentage yeah. of right. the donations okay it's just I, another way to help is, how is it to like promote that like do, is are, do, do your does your fan base always know that you ha that exists i haven't posted it on my tiktok yet it's more just like instagram and snapchat people know about it mm -hmm. but i probably will promote it on tiktok one day i just it's me having to go through and actually add people individually to my instagram story so i know if i did it on tiktok yeah. i'd just It'd, be on my phone yeah, all day trying yeah. to add people to this thing that's wow. Cool. Okay. Because everyone says like that's the future. You could be creating your personal NFTs, your personal coin. Like now that you're actually doing it, do you see the value both like economically? 100%. What's the value? Like is it you're making money from it? I'm making money from it. And then I get a little bit more interaction with fans, which is cool. Just like kind of build up that trust again. And yeah. I don't know. I, I, I like it. I'd, I'd recommend that if you are able to get into the cryptocurrency space with your own brand, you should. Okay. How are you? How do you make money off that? Is it from selling the coin or is it... Okay? I think it's from selling the coin i'm not i haven't actually ha i haven't gotten any money into my account yet but i do see the number rising whenever more people buy the coin so i know that i am making money but i haven't received any money from it yet okay okay interesting mm -hmm. that, that's super that's cool. cool yeah because everyone's in the nft space they're starting to buy the tokens and if you believe in a creator and you're there like as a core fan of mm -hmm. yours then you know that if you trust that the creator's <laughs> going to grow and reach new people you want to be part of that you yeah. want to own that token it's like a little piece of like the brand i guess but i uh, i you know jack neal he knows mm -hmm. more about this than i do he's the one that got me into it if you want to talk to him about it and maybe get your own coin that'd be cool yeah. that'd be sick okay yeah. you make, coin, do you make more like from that than like brands no no brands are still more brand brand money is great <laughs> brand money is great because yeah. I, I i recently looked at like how much you make from the tiktok fund yeah i think i make like minimum wage from tiktok videos yeah, itself right. but like brand deals is where you make the most money yeah we had a friend once like he was just sitting on a couch and he just take i mean it's Oh, I don't know if I, maybe we have yeah. to leave that out, but he was sitting on the couch and he opens his TikTok withdrawal fund and just goes, Oh, I have 60K in here. He just put his phone down again. I'm like, Yeah. 
Mm. Some people make a ton and they forget about it, yeah. but in the in, when you look at individual TikToks, it's not a lot of money that you're making from each video. No, pretty, but like, still, just I'm having sixty k just in your fucking TikTok creator phone, that's nuts. That, he hasn't drawn any of that nope. out. No, yet. he probably just doesn't. He's just in there. Does, oh, you can all, you only pull three thousand out a day, so like I don't I know. know what he's doing. <laughs> Catch up to that shit. Twenty <laughs> days of keeping and <laughs> taking it out. Yeah. No. no. It's that's nuts. a whole car in there, bro. Yeah. It's For a real. whole car. It's a whole fucking it's a rent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a multiple houses. That's like just a, a down payment on a house, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. <laughs> so oh, you were working at Best Buy before, so obviously that's making like minimum wage. Mm-hmm. But uh like when do you when do you start feeling like, have you reached a point where you're like, Oh, this is serious money? I'm making far more than most people working professionally. I'm at jobs. the point where like I am making more money than I thought I would ever make. Because going into yeah. school for computer science, I was like, Oh yeah. 100k Mm -hmm. like that's the max i'm gonna have to look forward to one day and now that i've gotten a little bit past that it's like holy shit like what do i do now like this is kind of crazy would you consider yourself like rich no no not by it that's good i'm not i'm not not rich but i'm comfortable to where i know that that one day i possibly could be rich if i used my money right Mm -hmm. but i'm not i'm not there yet yeah okay it's weird i feel like a lot of creators like they're either actually loaded or they cap so hard about making so much money, <laughs> yeah. right? They, they fake, I don't even own a Tesla to, yet. Like, I'm not there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's like the first step, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like once you own the Tesla, you're like, oh, I'm an influencer that's kind of made it. I own a mm-hmm. $45,000 car. Yeah. But not there yet. There's a lot of cap. I can pay rent. Too. I don't have any debt. And I can buy whatever I want for videos without having to really worry about it. Okay. So I feel like I'm good, but I'm not rich. Yeah. You can't like, David travel. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't you travel. I can't travel want. freely. Like last time I went on a trip, it was like sponsored. So like I had my flight paid for. I didn't get mm. paid to go. I got my flight paid for to go. What was that about? Where'd you go? Uh, festival, the Spring Awakening Rave Festival. I'm not really into raves, but I thought it'd be a cool experience to go go to Chicago. Drop and, a tab, get fucked up. Yeah, Let's go. so super fun. <laughs> <laughs> In Chicago. In Chicago, Chicago was by far the cleanest city I've ever seen. Really. I've lived in Vegas, New York, now LA. Chicago was like noticeably clean. Like I walked outside, I was like, the sidewalks, like I could. Well, you do live in Hollywood, so you know. LA's gross. LA LA is so gross. gross. What's some of the grossest things you've seen living in LA? Because we have stories. Yeah, we have. I mean, remember that one time? Okay, we'll tell that after. But what's what's your story? I don't know if I have a personal gross LA story, but I remember reading on the news while I was looking for places to live. It was like homeless person in Hollywood dumps pot of diarrhea on a woman <laughs> he like was shitting in a pot okay and like kept it brewing in the sun saw just a woman walking down the street and yeah. dumped it on her like what do you even do in that situation and you're not even filming it it's for not a like there's no there's no river nearby <laughs> you can't get an uber yeah. are you gonna get in your car are you gonna try and jump in somebody's pool like what do you do when you're covered in hot hobo shit yeah. <laughs> it's fucked Nothing. I think we, you find a really lucky dog who's willing to just oh my lick God, it all no. off. Ew. There's a lot of butt naked hobos. Everywhere. A lot of butt naked hobos. During summertime, they're like straight butt naked, everything yeah. hanging out. I remember see, I was just driving and I saw this dude like on a park bench just like this. And I was looking at him like, something's wrong. And I looked at him a little bit more. No fucking <laughs> pants. Just ass Talks on the you, thing. Because you think they wrong. underwear on, but it's just their fucking But his bush. shirt was hanging <laughs> everything. <laughs> so bad. What's your guys' gross LA story? Oh, we were driving on Sunset, right? By uh, where all the kids used to live at Vine Street. Yeah. And Berkeley, it's Berkeley's driving, and I'm just sitting in the front seat, and we're just having a normal conversation. Like, oh, Travis kind of shitty today. Yeah. Like, yeah. And we passed by literally where David Dobrik used to live, like that apartment complex across the street from like um, just where uh, Chinese Theater is. And there's a 7 Eleven there. And there's like this, how would you describe it? A three foot like yeah, cement, like cement wall, like wall kind of like right here. And we just like both kind of like look at this guy at the same time. Oh my God. And he's just like laying down. Ass like naked. Dead, <laughs> ass naked. Like poopy. Wait, what would you call <laughs> that position though, right, Burke? Like it would be called like the. Like you're, sleep, like you're sleeping, sleeping on your side. side. He's like he's on his side. But he was. He's shitting. Shitting. And he's grabbing, grabbing his it. poop and drawing with it on this fucking cement it's wall. Co- he's covered with it. It's covered in shit. Poop. Don't grabs do it drugs. Hand. Yeah, and Picasso. just sort of spraying it across the wall. Like, like, like no, it's, it's basically like paint terrible. to wall, paint to wall. My, again. my friend like, uh, Picasso was, shit. was helping me out and went to help uh, pick up my medication because I fucking hurt my ankle yeah. and wanted pain meds. She's walking out of CVS and this homeless lady who doesn't have any pants on either was like heard the rattle oh of God. the pills and was like, you have drugs. Give me those and chase them around the parking lot. Oh. They had to get to, like a security guard to jump in their car and drive away. Like they were trying to get oh. their drugs from them. My drugs from them. Damn. 
<laughs> it's fuck? not good. I was like, you don't need my five Tylenol, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's Tylenol Yo. PM. That's why they want it, okay? <laughs> it's a little bit more aggressive. That's fucking terrible. No, we've seen some crazy things. Um, I saw the other day that Beverly Hills has eight, like the worst crime rate, one of the worst crime yeah, rates in the bad. city, in the in the I country. I can believe it. People it's just going to shit. Beverly Hills. Yeah. Huh? Got a lot of rich shit there. Yeah. yeah, yeah so mm-hmm. rob. You're like, who am I going to rob? Obviously going to go to the people that have shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, no, we've seen crazy stuff, but also some homeless people are some of the nicest people ever. No, it's like a, no, you're saying well, no. They're nice because uh, they need the, money near the beach. Near the beach, when they're beach hobos like, are a lot nicer than in city hobos. Dude, we were gonna do a, 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 you know Landon, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we were gonna do a YouTube video. Of we we camp on the side of Hollywood Boulevard for a day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what was well, and just like just like day, and just overnight. watch just, people. No, just be a hobo for the day. Oh, yeah. I don't think that would go over well with the internet. I, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> no you not. have to message it as, guys, we're sympathetic. Yeah. So we want to experience no, it. And, the, so and half of the AdSense will go to a fountain. If yeah, you do yeah. it that way, you're okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but if you're just like, I'm going to be a hobo for a day, everybody's <laughs> yeah. going to be like, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Seriously. But did they, there's like, how, there's like, like hobos living in like literally actual like fucking houses on the fucking corner they have like, like windows and everything like flowers they have like doormats. next to the freeway they just like gathered yeah. whatever scrap they could and they built a house and like it's, yeah it looks they can nice. they and please they aren't port- coming to move it i saw yeah. somebody with like a nice decorated yard with like yeah, one yeah, but just like on the highway and the house yeah. is made of cardboard and you're like how are you able to make this yeah. Yeah. there was a there was a huge controversy where people were selling uh uh uh, RVs that don't move on the side of the road and they would rent them out yeah. to tenants who were homeless people and they would pay like 30 bucks a month and they could live in this non-moving RV on the side of the house and when they couldn't pay they'll kick them out and move in a new homeless person for yeah. 30 bucks a month though in LA like that's a steal and a half yeah. no. <laughs> but if you're homeless you're making like 25 cents every two days no I think the true like, what was like it? you make like you really f- just have to either like sell flowers on the side of the road or like just apparently you money. make more minimum wa- you make more than minimum wage if you're a homeless person apparently like if, if you if maybe. you just, if you beg if you like have like a sign up like throughout the whole like whole twenty four hours you like I mean if that's what sure I saw, I saw go, if you're making more mu- if you're making more than minimum wage go for it the minimum wage hasn't been raised in twelve years if you <laughs> yeah, can make more yeah. by standing on the side of the road do it yeah like yeah. come on seriously. Uh, how involved are you in, in politics on TikTok too? You get pretty political? Nah, nah. Anymore, not anymore. You used to be? More? I used to try to, and I just, it never really worked out for me. Nobody wants to listen to what I have to say, and I've finally acknowledged that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not, I don't get too political. I still pay attention because I, I do vote, but yeah. I don't, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to try and influence people, I think, mm. in that sense of mm. like, you believe whatever you want to believe. I don't care. Yeah, I get what you mean. Um, so how different is it though, like, because when you, no one talks politics out here in terms of like the influencer world in, in LA, yeah. no one really talks about it online. Um, so it's interesting that you kind of moved away from that. It wasn't just because of the backlash, or was it? I mean, it was partly because of the backlash. It was like, okay, a mosquito. Oh, I, mosquito. I obviously don't have the respect or the knowledge to be talking about some of the things that I was trying to talk about in the past, and I yeah was just not going to do that anymore. Mm. If I have like something that like needs to be said, like. I don't know. There was one vi- like when the Capitol riots happened. I made a video on that that like I would probably do again. But like other mm. things, I won't. I don't yeah. care that much. Do you still get comments like about the entire incident? Like, all the time. To this, to this day, still. Yeah, I got nominated I'll- for the streamies, and all the comments are like, "Jay doesn't deserve to be here." And I'm like, "Okay, guys, thank you. I'm so sorry." <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> do you think yeah. that's gonna like go away at some point, or is it more like? No. No. I don't think so. But like, I've kind of gotten to the point where it's like I. Like what can else can I? I, I yeah. probably can't. I I can do more, but what else can I do to try and change these people's opinions about me that have never met me? Yeah. Like I just I have. I'm not gonna get the comment. I'm probably yeah. gonna get the comments for a very 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 long time mm-hmm. if as, if I keep staying in the public well, cause, eye. Yeah. Because like I met you and uh, you're a completely different person than I thought thought you were going to be. Quieter. Like, yeah, a lot quieter. <laughs> but and I didn't I didn't know that that all that stuff came out like that long ago. So I oh, was really? like thinking. That you were this person, but like you're completely not that fucking person when I met you. So yeah, yeah, you're a lot quieter in person. I noticed a lot. That's of what I get the most. Right. Yeah. Is like yeah. you're really not that loud. I'm like I get all that energy out when I make the videos. <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> yeah, and when you feel like no one's watching because like you're just filming it in your in your room, it's way easier, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're so much more like guys. What's going on versus out in public? That's not so much. How I can't you be are. that. I don't feel like being that loud, energetic mm-hmm. person in real life because it's just, it's too much. You yeah. get enough from it from the videos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you ever have people come up to you up in the street? Has anyone every said, day? When, but when they recognize you, has they have they ever said anything about like negative towards you? Yeah. 
Like what? What's the story of that? Uh, I once people make fun of this on the internet because I did talk about it, but I was at Home Depot because I was trying to buy boxes because I was trying to move. Reason I was moving is because my address got leaked. People Shit. were coming to my address, going up to the call box, calling what? me, trying to find me, and I was like, "This is kind of scary. I need to go." So find I'm in you a to Home yell Depot. at you or find you to take pictures with you? Both, Either I think. Way, it's but it was scary. it was scary. Yeah. I'm not sure because I never went and met with them. But it was like they were asking for JS and not Bella. So I was like, this is an internet person. But I'm at Home Depot trying to find boxes, and this like little white kid just comes up to me, and he's like, oh my god, are you JS? And I'm like, yeah, hi. And he's like, you're a fucking racist, you piece of shit. And I'm just like holding boxes, and I'm like, o- okay. And I just tried to, I just got bought my stuff and walked out. But he was like with his dad or something, and he was still just yelling at me. He was like. I don't know, 16, 17. Oh it was God. weird. That's I didn't, so didn't like that experience. No. But like, yeah. what, did his, what was his dad doing? Shopping at Home Depot. And he just, his dad's too. Yeah. I don't know. Like, go ahead, little Timmy. He, he, kind of, he, he just kind of like wandered up to me and was like, you JS? And like, usually when that happens, it's like, can I take a picture with you? Oh my God, I love your videos. Like, that's so cool. But like, just this person this was upset about off. the drama that was yeah. happening. And I, I, I understood. But also at the same time, it was like, I'm going to start wearing sunglasses, hat, and mask out in public. Like, I can't really go out without getting recognized anymore. It's gotten better, though. I haven't gotten, like, mean people coming up to me in a long time, but it's still kind of, like, like you get yeah. that little You get scared, scared for every a time. second, yeah. right? What, what are they going to say? You can tell when somebody recognizes you. Like, they kind of, like, look at you and then look at your phone. And, like, look at you again. And look yeah. at your phone again. You feel like you're being watched everywhere you go. Yeah. When, when, you, when, when someone recognizes and they start looking at you, you're like, oh, shit, either they're not going to have the balls to come up or, yeah. they're, or they're just going to keep on staring at you and I just have to stay and, like, act normal. I sometimes right? have the no. opposite effect where it's like, I think people are lo- looking at me when nobody's looking at me. So <laughs> just keep on looking over to them. And they're just like, yo, why are you staring at me, bro? And you're like, hey, you watch my TikTok? No, what <laughs> like, the what fuck are you? Who are you? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. I always like it when like kids come up to me they're like I'm your biggest fan I'm like you are so small and adorable this is so cool like yeah. and they take a picture with me and it's fun but yeah. yeah I usually can't leave the house without getting recognized anymore at, at mm. f- uh, the boxing event we got recognized so fucking much down there that was like oh, the first shit. time where we actually like realized we had like a fan base that felt good yeah that, that felt sick. really good because really? we got our were whole both fan you guys base there? Over. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah we were all there yeah. okay because mm-hmm. I just remember running yeah, yeah, into yeah. you he's the only one that was had a fake Fucking yeah, <laughs> fake I was the only one getting the club. Yeah, Chris and I were just in our Airbnb, just sitting there and just playing. Okay, whatever. Just thinking no. about how we can, you know. You I, know. There was a lot of people that had fakes that weren't supposed to be in that club, though. Oh yeah. 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 We like every time I saw something, fakes. I'm like, "Aren't you 17? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, you're you're seven. No, I know you're here in LA. It's fucked. Oh yeah. yeah. People that get into like these clubs, like there's like literally like 16 year olds like getting these clubs, and I'm like, what the? Well, fuck? we were at a party the other day for the, this YouTuber, and everyone was drinking, smoking. They're doing everything. So, a lot of older people, a lot of girls, and this kid comes out to me and I know him he's a really chill kid he's no he's known as like like he he has a persona being a really rich kid on on YouTube and I go yo how old are you again and he goes I'm 15 I'm like holy shit (laughs) and he goes yeah man I'm here for networking I'm like dude like we're all like super hammered and you're just like walking around networking you're like hey can I get your Instagram really quick and it's like somebody I know who you're talking about he's a hustler oh he's a hustler bro he's everywhere he, he, he wants to collab with everybody but it's just like what a weird world where we're partying with people that I was hanging out with when I was in the eighth grade. We're even partying with people that are fucking forty. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, true. Then there's a forty year old that shows up and Team they're hanging Star, out there too. We party with yeah. Star sometimes. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I know. Fucking. It's yeah. weird. It's how old's Fousey? Fousey's like twenty seven. No way. Almost no. in their thirties. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like that's that's yeah. right. Like all the old YouTube people are like yeah. almost yeah. in their thirties now. Yeah. Like the Cody Coes. Mm-hmm. Did you ever have any like famous commenters uh, talk about you when you were in drama? Philip DeFranco almost did, and that all, like he That's reached out to me, and we were like on the phone talking about it, and he's like, my my, my people want to do a story on this, and I'm like, please don't. <laughs> like if I'm if the first time I'm on your show that I've been watching since I was like, I don't know, a tiny teenager, I'd yeah. be if it was that, I'd be so upset. But he didn't. I don't think anybody really like like I didn't make anything crazy. I wasn't even on TikTok room. Yeah. I was on lesbian TikTok room. What the fuck is lesbian TikTok room? TikTok room, but for lesbians. I exclusively <laughs> lesbians? <laughs> like, that's the audience is lesbian TikTok, TikTok room. Oh, what kind of drama do lesbian TikTokers get into? Oh my God, this girl broke up with this girl and now this girl's dating this one. And Wait, this one's so it's like, Oli- it's like Olivia Ponton and Kai on there a lot? Probably. I don't pay attention to lesbian <laughs> okay. TikTok room. Yeah. I don't care that much, yeah. but I thought it was funny. Uh, that's fucking so there's not an actual tiktok room anymore but there's a lesbian tiktok room i think they changed no, the name of it's it it's, ki- uh, it's yeah. tiktok something shade now. room shade it's something else something but the tiktok dumb. room still exists it's just under a different name yeah now. they have a lot less followers and they're private but i think they're just getting like deleted by TikTok, yeah. by instagram because yeah. yeah, all they do is talk shit about people on the yeah. internet it fueled <laughs> but like the creators loved it Did which they? is no oh, one talks yeah. about it but the creators were like Oh guys, I was on Shade Room today. I was on this today, yeah, and they're they always talking it. about how big of a deal it was. But like you, I act feel like, like you I would it. cry. 
Like yeah, if but so I, many people get I don't, I can't handle the controversy and stuff. Like even before the N word drama, like yeah. I was always in drama and I never handled it well. Like yeah. I was like, how do I keep getting myself in this fucking situation? Yeah. <laughs> this was different. This is more of like, oh, I broke up with so and so, and like yeah. five hundred thousand yeah, yeah. people like, instantly care. It's like all about like, it's all, drama. yeah, it's all about yeah. like relationships and shit. And I don't post about my relationship anymore, yeah. so I don't care. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what? I think the craziest part is back when you think about the internet, like, um, just people weren't as friendly towards like gay people on the, on the internet. Mm. It used to be pretty toxic in real life too. True. In it's real getting life. a lot better though. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot better. Now it's a lot more accepting. Like people were very happy when Olivia Ponton came out back when we were watching YouTube back in like 2016, 2017, even then it was, it was pretty toxic. Like if you it came out as gay, it was a controversy. It rather was than like, yeah. Like a like you just coming out, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, even like fuck. For example, like Speed, right? When he when he came out oh, or yeah. supposedly came out, I don't know yeah. if that was a queer bit or not, but yeah, like everyone was talking about it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's more toxic. On, it's not as toxic on YouTube anymore and Instagram. I feel like it's, it's still toxic on TikTok. I feel TikTok like okay, is bad, I like, feel like I've never come out as gay on TikTok. I've just yeah. kind of been gay on yeah. TikTok, and it's not my main content. So, like, technically, I'm the biggest tiktok lesbian but mm, i'm not a tiktok yeah. lesbian you know like i'm True. not like oh. the hey mama's lesbians type of person. Hey, what's not my a hey mama le- lesbian you don't want the hey mama's lesbians no what's a hey mama lesbian oh you are There's, so out of touch with lesbian I know, culture I am. it's crazy I am very much how are you not TikTok. in this explain I, it's I just know. like a video of a bunch of like lesbians that were popular in 2019 saying hey mamas and like it was so cringy so now they're <laughs> titled the hey mama's lesbians but i'm not a part of that yeah i make educational videos yeah okay yeah. Wait. So are, you're lesbian, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then uh, you, in your bio, you say they them. Mm-hmm. What What does that mean? It means I don't care how you perceive me. Mm-hmm. I've gone all my life being like this big girl. So like whenever people are like, be like, are you a girl? I'd be like, yeah. It's like, oh no, you're too masculine. So I'm like, so eventually I was like, okay, I'm a boy. They're like, oh, you think you can be a boy? Like, fuck you. You fucking like, yeah. they just call me a bunch of stuff. So like, now I just don't care if you think I'm a girl. You can use she, her pronouns. If you think I'm a boy, he, him. If you don't know, they, them's fine. You don't, don't care? I don't care. That's that's interesting. I've never heard that before. A lot of people are very like strict on like, this is what you A lot to- of people that I talk to that are they, them, they also say they don't care. But like, I have also met people that are like, they're very strict. You have to use this specific pronoun. And I understand that too. But with me, like, I don't, yeah. I don't care. Mm-hmm. that's cool that's very open. it makes it easier yeah. and a lot of big a big mental load off me because i still yeah. get comments it's like are you a boy or a girl it's like i don't care you're not offended by that because you're not a, you're, you're not anymore i used to like as a teenager like i've gotten it my whole life i don't care anymore yeah mm. okay i get what you mean i mean it's, you got the hat the backwards hat right? <laughs> yeah, totally. yeah, yeah you're tall as shit too you are very tall mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, six two you play yeah. basketball I'm sure in college, asks you that, right? You play basketball in college? For like yeah. a really small junior college, but still, like still. Still pretty good. Fucking cool. Yeah, but I didn't like it. Like I played in high school and thought I liked it, but yeah. then I realized that I was only playing it because I had a crush on a girl on the team. Oh, and then fuck. in college, she wasn't on the team anymore. So I was like, why don't I like this sport anymore? <laughs> this is awful. I hate running. How, what was it like in high school? Uh, like, because... Uh, like hitting on girls and trying to be in a relationship with a girl when like the dominant thing was straight relationships. Yeah, like how's it like going? Or like, or like going that. going to like the girls' locker room when you're like. I mean, you know I didn't come out until like I was a junior in high school. Yeah, uh, and everybody knew about it because me coming out ended up with like me in foster care. So like it was a huge thing in oh, this small what? town. Uh, and then I was just dating one girl throughout high school, so it wasn't too big of an issue. Like everybody kind of knew, but like didn't know that we were dating. What well, if wait, you don't wait. mind? Like what what's yeah. the story about? It's just you my my out. parents. I, I have a good relationship with my parents now, but when I first came out as gay, it was like I had to go to church school. I had to learn how to be straight. Uh, oh, I had to hide oh. it. I couldn't tell my siblings. It became physical at one point. Like it mm. was just it wasn't a good experience. And so when I got put into foster care, everybody kind of was like, "Oh shit, Bell's in foster care." They figured out why Bell's gay. Wait, so oh. you came out to your your parents, and then they obviously weren't. A- not a big supportive fan. of that super cool. super catholic cool. like religious people that mm. they're they're not anymore it's a lot better like yeah. i have a good relationship with them now but i don't think i would have a good relationship now with them now if i didn't get put in foster care like i needed the separation how long were you in foster care for from 16 to 18 technically but Damn. i did extended foster care until i was 21 what does Damn. being in foster care entail when you're like older and you're like 16 versus being you like eight years old? moved to a lot right? of different houses. I just had a suit. I had a bag of like all my clothes and like I got put into this one house. They didn't speak any English. I had to have a four-year-old translate to the mom to me like what time I have to go to school. And then I got moved to a different house across town and they were like, we're not driving you to school. You have to walk. So I had to like walk across town to go to school. 
and that was weird. They like tried to get me to sell drugs several times, and what? then I got moved what? to a different house. Wait, 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 hold on. How do they make try to make you sell drugs? They don't. They're not going to give you your foster care money if you don't sell what you have to sell. What so the fuck? Is, is it a business for them? Because I've heard horror stories like that, right? Them, uh, they, they don't. Those those people don't foster care. I'm anymore. sure they I, like, don't. We, we got it. Yeah. We got them out. But like, yeah, like if they. The government gives the foster parents a certain amount of money to take care of you every month, and certain people will take advantage of that and like say you're not going to get your allowance of money this month if you don't do this certain thing. So it's a business for them to bring in kids that they yeah right. There's a lot of like there's there are some shitty foster parents, but Mm -hmm. then I lived with my brother for a while. He kicked me out because I got a B in calculus. It was super fucking weird. And what, what's his relationship? Yeah, what's going on? Your brother's bro? like just hella like strict about your grades too. He was like, "You need to have straight A's," and I was like, "I've never been a straight A student in my life. What do you mean?" And yeah. so like I had all A's and a B in calculus, and it was like, "That's it. You got to be in calculus, and you don't pick up the cat litter." And I'm like, "It's not my cat," and I got kicked out. <laughs> That's so wow. fucked. Oh my god. Uh, then uh. kind of like slept on friends' couches for a little bit until they found me another foster parent because there's really not a lot of foster parents in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then lived with one at the end that was really good until I was 18 and got my own place. Okay, yeah. so you got a, along with them really, really. Yeah. your last they one. They were like an old basketball coach, so, like, just well, stay with me. What was the process of, like, you know, reviving your relationship with your parents, I guess? It was... was it like, you educating them or them educating themselves, and then you guys came back together? I didn't talk to my parents for about three years, uh, and in that time, I wasn't allowed to see my siblings as well. And so I decided to be... I don't want to call it the bigger person, but like be the bigger person and reach out and be like, okay, dad, I am willing to try and start a new relationship with you. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it was because I wanted to see my younger siblings again. Yeah. And so through that, through a lot of talking and like, I don't know, just like come and understand that he's changed as a person and I've changed as a person too. We're better now. Like that's good. Yeah. Bigger person isn't the word there because you shouldn't be the bigger person for coming in and like saying, you know, like from your point of view, he, it should be your parents who are always there for yeah. you and supporting you, right? Yeah. It sucks that you you're the one who had to approach it at the end. It did, but worked out. Like I get to see my siblings all the time. I get to go visit them. My dad helps me a lot of stuff. I call him every time like I get a big deal or something and like mm-hmm. it's cool. Like I, I like having the relationship Good. back now. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Okay. Yeah. How, how many siblings do you have? Eleven. Whoa. <laughs> you just keep on dropping these like twists and, and It's like, like you guys didn't do your research no, about me or something. Oh uh, no, I did, but I did not I didn't find like I knew some things I knew you were in foster care for a little bit, but I didn't yeah. know the exact details of all I have eleven siblings, that. uh two older brothers. I'm the oldest girl and then the rest are younger. Okay. Holy All fuck. half siblings, though. Wow. Okay. Uh, it's like that's like really expensive to have eleven kids. <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> so expensive. And, they, and like, they're like, all like very supportive as well. Like so no, none of them are were like bigoted towards like you being gay. I mean, I'm the older ones. Like my brothers, I don't think they cared. Like one of them took me in, and yeah. then another one has been cool and like asked about like how's your girlfriend doing. So he's cool. And then like the younger ones, if they are home, if they ever say anything that's like slightly homophobic, and I'm like. Nah. No, <laughs> no like, I got At ten left. You're okay. No. Like for a, for a yeah, while, yeah. the little like the yeah. little ones, like when they were like four or five, they'd like be like Bella, like why don't you have a boyfriend? And yeah. I'm like I don't want one. They're like you want to be alone forever. And I'm like listen, kid, <laughs> stop yeah. roasting me for a sec. <laughs> yeah. Um. Or they'd be like, why do you wear boy clothes? And I'm like, well, they're not boy clothes if I'm a girl and I'm wearing them. Yeah. And, like I have to try and teach them a little bit, but like they're not. They're they're fine. Yeah, they're young. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it kind of weird how there's similarities in like how young they are and naive compared to like how old people are and they're still naive? Yeah. yeah. It's weird. You just gotta teach them. Like pe- like prejudice isn't inherit it's taught mm-hmm. and you have to unlearn it sometimes yeah there's a famous um woman who talked about that she was like you learn to hate you can unlearn to hate just as much yeah, yeah. huh okay and then i want to hear about this story a little bit so when you are staying at the house where they're trying to make you sell drugs how do you report <laughs> and get out of a situation like that you have a you have a social worker that comes and meets with you i think mm-hmm. at that time it was like once a month but you and stayed so there for four years right no, no, no. 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 I, I, I moved in and out of a lot of different houses. This oh, okay, is just okay. one that I was at for a very short amount of time. And the next okay. time the social worker came, I was like, hey, they're doing some shady shit. And yeah. I don't feel comfortable. And like, as soon as they hear like, I'm not comfortable, they moved me. Okay, okay. that's And good. so then, then they they had like a couple more kids there that also kind of like caught in with it and were like telling the fo- social their social worker about it. And I'm pretty sure they're not foster parents anymore i hope they're arrested. i think i yeah. think they got kicked out or whatever happened i'm yeah. not sure i don't keep up with it i wasn't <laughs> so able to keep up with it i didn't have like a cell phone at the time but like yeah oh, damn. wow and then what was your like the thing that you attached to when you're going through that like were you watching youtube all the time it was Franco? a lot of youtube uh-huh. a lot of youtube and then just like try and do do normal school stuff yeah. like when i was a freshman sophomore living with my parents i couldn't go to football games i couldn't really like hang out with friends and like once mm-hmm. i finally got that freedom in foster care it yeah. was like I can make friends outside of school now. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. And yeah, 
That's lit. Okay, so part of you got a whole bunch of new freedom from like not being yeah. like locked. Because your parents, I'm, I'm the way you're talking about them, they sounded very strict when you're younger. Very strict. But I was also like the oldest. I was like a guinea pig child. They didn't yeah. know what they were doing. Uh, they figured it out with the younger ones, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, was your brother that you moved in with, was he younger? He was the oldest, bro- my oldest brother. No, oh, okay. From my mom's side. Uh, Damn, bro. And, then yeah. you, and were you this positive about it going through it the entire no. time? No. I told you I was an extremely toxic, hateful person. Yeah. I've gone through a lot of therapy and worked on it and like figured out what was wrong. But like, and like, I was just mean to everybody. I got into arguments for no mm. goddamn reason yeah. and said awful shit just because it's, it shouldn't sound like an excuse and Built I don't want it to sound rage. like that, but like, it was just like, I hated myself. So I hated everybody kind That's of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we knew the extent of like what you do on TikTok and then mm-hmm. obviously the drama you went into, but this changes and it doesn't change everything, right? What you said, but it, it gives a lot of context that how different of a person yeah. you were. Yeah. I've talked about it a little bit on TikTok, but it gets to a point where like, I'm not going to just like tell you my sob story all the time, yeah. you know, like in a 60 second TikTok, you can't, yeah. it takes something like a podcast, right? Yeah. Have you done podcasts before? I had a podcast on Netflix. What? What? Yeah. What, what was that about? Uh, educational stuff. Oh, so she like keeps dropping. Yeah. What yeah, the wait, fuck? Wait. Oh, yeah, I'm also in Avengers. Uh, next <laughs> time it drops. Uh, I'm I have new... superpowers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, the Netflix thing. Uh, I got the job when I was still in college. I remember like running out of my math class because I like, got an Instagram message from Netflix and I was like hyperventilating. I had to leave. Uh, and the whole podcast was just like me taking a little bit of a Netflix show, like let's say Umbrella Academy. Mm-hmm. I'd take the time travel part of it and we would take it's a really good show. like a 10 minute podcast about time travel. Like I got okay. to talk to Vsauce about it. It was pretty cool. Like, Oh wow. Had the, cool I think I had the podcast yeah, for three Vsauce. seasons and then it got dropped because of the whole n-word drama so you yeah. lost that yeah. that program because of the whole drama yeah, yeah. a couple of tiktokers were promoting or telling their viewers to go message all these brands that i was working with yeah and it was just a consequence of what happened i just got fired lost the netflix job that's hard yeah yeah fat mosquito yeah you're gonna get bit ah you're about to ah, get did have a mosquito bad. on your face it was there for like Dude, that's the you didn't say <laughs> yeah i fucking <laughs> smacked the shit out of it oh my god definitely, gonna be a oh, god. definitely god. you're gonna have a fat mosquito bite right that's there. like oh that's he sucks. was on there for a <laughs> that's yeah he was sucking the shit he was really just enjoying his time there on your face yeah that sucks. That's like, oh yeah, that's, that's like a good clip case. too. I just yeah, that's a clip. <laughs> <laughs> that's a clip. That's insane. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, wow. Is there anything else major that we're, we're missing? Because we've gone through a ton of stuff from how you became TikTok no famous, idea. but you Is went through. Is there anything else? What's what's up next? Like you're killing on shorts. Your shorts get crazy views. Yeah, you're, like you're over also two million subscribers. It's almost, yeah, insane. Almost I only started shorts because Sean does magic. You know him. He was goat. blowing goat. up. Yeah. Goat. Ah, he was blowing Sean. up on shorts, and I was like, I have to get you know, on man. this. And so goat. I started he's uploading, the, and it was doing. He just started great. a whole different YouTube channel. And, Did he? Like, yeah. In, Posted all of his shorts. Dude, Sean I don't think is the I wanna... most genius person about so many little things happening yeah. in the space. Like with Spotlight, he was Spotlight. the first one on there. Mm-hmm. Shorts. Uh, have you? Yeah, you were hanging out with him in, in Miami too. I met, ran into him in Miami, and I, I randomly ran into him all over LA sometimes, and yeah. it's really funny. It's like Sean is magic. He's one of the yeah. nicest he's, guys. He's, he's like literally the first person we ever met. Yeah, so I saw him first doing time, shorts, yeah. and so no. I got on shorts, and now it's just completely blowing up. It's amazing. I highly recommend shorts if you're trying to get on YouTube. The only thing is, you do have to make long form content and yeah. be consistent with it for YouTube to reward you with the shorts mm-hmm. and then you also have to i mean frankly you just have to be family friendly as well because mm-hmm. they, they're promoting people to be the i'm face. not very family friendly you aren't but you are in a way i cuss way too much and i talk about weed way too much like True. i'm not i'm not the most family friendly yeah. i have Same i don't know like it's we just do too. <laughs> like people ask me too like how come you cuss so much I'm like i don't even think about it yeah was i not supposed to <laughs> like, fuck. like sometimes i acknowledge my cursing by cursing yeah. so i'd be like yeah. shit i said shit or like, like fuck, fuck i said fuck it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's but like I think you have that fine line though. You can say that, but you're also educational. Yeah, and so yeah. Th- there is something about right now, like YouTube's looking for creators that can be like the face of what Shorts is. I think you are that. You you are a perfect <laughs> example alongside like Sean. I'm yeah. honored. Yeah. Honored by that. Do you uh, do you smoke a lot? Uh, not as much as I used to. What made you curb your your smoking? You know, like when you smoke weed and you just like get really anxious and paranoid yeah yes. that happened and that's that, that started happening way more like it used to be like a fun like oh i'm gonna get high i'm gonna like help myself fall asleep but then it was mostly just like me laying up and like this isn't helping so yeah. like that's really? the weed telling you to stop yeah i took a big tolerance break 
and then now because I haven't smoked in so long, I get that paranoia. Oh, really? I yeah. get that anxiety. I feel like know? once yeah. I take a tolerance Fucking break and I come back to here. it, it's a better experience than if I'm smoking a lot. Yeah. <laughs> then it gets worse. This kid doesn't give a shit because he just stoned twenty four seven. Do you just fuck. live through the anxiety or do you not get it? Oh uh, shit, I am the anxiety. I, I <laughs> am the dark. I don't get scared of that shit. I'm good. Interesting. It's weird. He no, lives, it yeah. doesn't make any sense. And then like plus it's hard to be productive when I'm stoned all the time. Yeah. It's like I have to make TikTok videos and ads and yeah. t- stream on Twitch and make YouTube videos and like when i'm high i just want to watch tv all the time so like yeah. it's hard to i also like <laughs> every time i've gotten high or like when i first started smoking let's do like productive things like football work mm-hmm. and like you know studying so when you like build a habit of doing routine stuff while you're high doing regular shit's easy yeah. you know you just gotta force you gotta get through that for six months yeah, of just get being for, stoned get through the, the See, diversity you know, when i started smoking i lived on a farm and so, like, I would just go outside, hang out with some cows, and just smoke with cows, and just hang out with fucking cows. Like, that's not productive <laughs> at all. Like, I just built up this habit of doing weird shit when I'm high. Fucking yeah. milking cows. <laughs> milking <laughs> cows, smoking a J. Oh, this, this kid's working a Chipotle line while he's stoned. Yeah. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah that was- you work at Chipotle? Yeah. Yeah. Those are the days. Yeah. Those I love Chipotle. Home Depot. I, I won, I don't know if you guys remember this, but David Dobrik had like a contest yeah. and get a year of Chipotle. I won. Like I was what? the winner oh. of that. Oh. <laughs> you won that? Rigged. I, it rigged. expired now, but like I made a whole video where I was wrapped up in a burrito blanket, tin foil. And I'm like, I'm the burrito. And then I won. It was cool. <laughs> you got free Chipotle whenever you want. For a whole year. I went like three times a week at, some, at one point. <laughs> That's yeah. Anytime that. anybody would come to visit me in LA, I'd be like, let's go to Chipotle. And like we'd walk there and like free food for everybody yeah and then there's what? that moment where you, you use the <laughs> card and on their screen it shows up as like a celebrity mm-hmm. as their card holder it always confused them they were always they always looked at it they brought over a manager to look at it too and i'm like just click the button yeah. just click, click the it button. Now, like, as an employee you definitely like there's so many different cards that like people try to bring there'd be like a chipotle card from 2012 and somebody yeah. tries to bring it to me and i scan it it's like invalid i think yeah. i still have it it has like my name on it and everything so like is it like wow. one of those like black cards uh i can try to find it it's like a isabella avila Custom oh, made burrito card. Wow. Oh, that. wow. That's yeah, sick. It's old as shit now, but. Wait, so when did you win that? It's golden. Uh, June 2020. Oh, damn. Wow. Expired. And the from June David Dobrik? Yeah, from David Dobrik. Did he give it to you or hand it to you? No, the COVID. They mailed it, but he right. didn't even follow me back. I was a little hurt. I was like, I won your contest. You're not going to follow me back on TikTok dick, or anything? Like, I had six million at the time, too. And I was like, please. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Um, so wow. those contests are fucking rigged. What the fuck? <laughs> Everybody got mad when I won. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to imagine, right? You got like, six million on TikTok and then you win. They the- were like, you should have given it to the homeless people. And I'm like, it's called a celebrity card. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I did buy food for homeless people. Anytime I would go, I just like grab an extra burrito. And there was a ton of homeless people in Santa Monica. So the first person I saw, I was like, here's a burrito. Oh, yeah. If a homeless person went into that store with the, that card, they'd think it's <laughs> yeah. stolen. Yeah, 100%. You know? Uh, wait, are we? At, what are we at, Lou? Around an hour. Yeah, we've done it. Oh, dude, this this has been going on for a minute. This is a great episode. Yeah, uh, so. We covered literally everything. Please tell me we haven't missed anything else. You, you're in Marvel. You're in James yeah. Bond. I'm like, trying to get into stand up comedy right now. Are you? Are you doing I want to get in stand up. I'm trying to get into one of the, like these like improv acting classes things. I have no idea. I have no experience in this stuff. I've done public speaking before, mm-hmm. but I think stand up would be cool. Like a cool next mm-hmm. step. It would be, and you know what? The uh, if you clip it and throw it on TikTok, mm-hmm. you'll because all these uh, sh- clubs like Improv, like the Comedy Cellar, they just want you to sell tickets. If you can get a million views on like you that, doing stand up, I'm gonna you're yeah, gonna sell yeah. exactly. I just have to you know write the jokes. Yeah. 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 Do you, have you written any <laughs> jokes? Like I know it's you can't you it sucks to ask. I them, have but. stuff written down, but it's not a cohesive like five ten minute bit yet yeah, yeah. i'm getting there I we'll think get you there make jokes soon. about you getting like your whole drama i think Prob- that, yeah. they'll yeah. probably be a part of it but i don't want to like just stick on it and be like i got canceled like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i got exposed laugh dude. at me please yeah. all right guys uh amazing episode uh where all of only js's links are gonna be linked down below go check it out anything specific you want to promote that's coming up just youtube tiktok instagram guys or my twitch i stream on twitch too yeah Fun times. all right we'll see you guys next time peace out guys peace Woo!